Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Back with more Psalms. Um, unfortunately, the 30 minute message won't come today, but I did say in the last two messages yesterday, it, it, it probably will come today, but it may not, and well, the may unfortunately happens. So please look forward to it. It is coming up shortly. Tonight, please be content with Psalm 9. We're not actually going to a verse in Psalm 9, we're going to stick to the title of it. Uh, title, is that the right word for these? Intro. You know what seems about right? That little that little section that um, appears right above the psalm. It appears before verse 1. I'm not sure what you call that. But let's just read it. It's Psalm 9's intro in beginning thingy. To the chief musician, to the tune of Death of the Son, a psalm of David. Now the reason I'm singling that out is because whatever... Of course, we already knew Psalms were songs. I actually covered that um, at some point in the recent past when I went into the Psalms. But this one was to the tune of some other song, Death of the Sun. Now, we have no idea what that song was, what it said, what it entailed. I guess we can fairly safely assume it was a Hebrew song, more than likely. But whatever the tune was, David was like, you know what? I'm going to use that tune and I'm going to tell another story. I'm going to um, sing different words to this particular tune. And so I want to make a very specific point on that. There have in the past, and even currently at the moment, there are some times when Christians will take a certain melody from a certain band, and then they'll put their own words to it, and they'll sing their own song. One that's been done by musicians for ages, but sometimes Christians have an issue with that, because it's like, well, why are you taking a secular song and going and making a Christian? You know, those are... You know, that it was it had a very bad origin, it had to be get a bad beginning, you shouldn't use it. Sometimes they'll even go so far as to say, Well, the devil's in the music, so don't put Christian words to it, or you're actually glorifying the devil. And I just want to say that is a load of hogwash. Now I have no idea what death of death of a son actually said. I have no idea what the words are. A death of the son. I have no idea. And and if it was a Hebrew song, I'm assuming it wasn't too too bad. At the exact same time, can we really be that nitpicky over what the song is? And anyone who wants to say that the devil's in the music, please give me a scripture for that. That sounds, sounds, pun slightly intended there, absolutely ridiculous. If you have Christian words, there's the meaning of your song. A song with no words really has no meaning. I mean, it, it, you can either like the sound of it or dislike the sound of it. That's... Or, or you could not care about the sound of it, like, okay, it's background noise, whatever. You can't really have a moral opinion on sound unless it means something. And sound can't mean, uh, it, sound is nothing more than, I, was, I guess, a certain type of sound could be used as a symbol, like the sound that certain nations, um, you know, use to go to war. Like, I know back in the Old Testament time, the trumpeters, if they sounded a certain sound, it meant certain things to the military. So I guess certain sounds could be good or bad. I I guess the devil could have a certain drum beat that he likes. I don't know. But, and even just saying it sounds so completely ridiculous. Meaning is attached to whatever the symbol or sound is by us humans. If, if, if most of the time, music... Usually, sound that has a distinct meaning will be something very distinct, very deliberate. The first thing that comes to mind is Morse code. Those are simple sounds, but they can be used to communicate various letters of the alphabet and thus complete messages. That could definitely, you know, be used to say something good or something bad. It can be used by, you know, the good guys or the bad guys when referring to various nations of the world. I use that term very, very liberally, and that's another... That's another message for another day. Uh, only God's kingdom is forever, and only God's kingdom is completely, truly, perfectly good. But, yeah, as far as music goes, I don't believe in a devil song, and I also don't believe in a God song. The only time you have a devil song or a God song is when the words in the song glorify God. So, if you are a Christian and you have an issue with certain, if you have an issue with certain types of music, I can understand having an issue with certain words and certain songs. I do as well. There are lots of songs out there that do glorify the devil, that do glorify sinful activity. I'm not comfortable with those either. But as far as the various sounds that are out there, and maybe, you know, using the tune 
of a secular band? No, I, I don't think that matters at all. I really can't believe it matters at all. The words are what means something. And this death of the sun, which was just some probably Hebrew song, you know, I'm sure it meant something to the Creator and probably meant something to some of the people of the nation. It is now canonized in Scripture forever, not the tune, the words, because it is God's word. So when it comes to music, the words are what's really, really, truly important. And if some Christian wants to take a secular song and put Christian words to it, I'm all for it. You go for it, man or woman. You go for it. Glorify our God a little bit more. He can never get enough glory because he deserves it all. Um, and as far as musical styles, again, the words are what's important. Who cares what the musical style is? If the words glorify God, there you are. You don't understand what the words are because you can't understand them? Yeah, I'm referring to certain types of genres, probably particularly hard rock and metal. Look up a lyric sheet. You could say that the words mean nothing, you know, if you can't understand them. Well, that not only applies to the good side, it applies to the negative side either. If you say Christian metal is worthless because you can't understand the lyrics, well, I guess, you know, non-Christian or even satanic metal is also worthless because you can't understand the lyrics in that as well. That sword cuts two ways. So as Christians, let's uh, be careful and intelligent in what we say, in what we think, and also let's be consistent and first and foremost biblical. And once again, the Bible doesn't say anything about a tune, but it has a lot to say about words and conduct. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.